As Path of Exile 2 Early Access is soon approaching, you might be wondering what's different between Path of Exile 2 and 1. The information we have so far have been drip-fed to us through interviews, gameplays and just random Discord chats over the years. And with this video I'm making an attempt to summarize it all without going too much into depth. Everything you see in this video is still subject to change, it might not exist in early access on release, it may be removed altogether or rebalanced. So I recommend looking at this video as just a guide of things to look out for at release of Path of Exile 2 Early Access. Starting out with the changes to gems which have seen the biggest overhaul in PoE 2. Gem sockets no longer exist in gear at all, which should make gearing way more simplified early on. Instead, a character always have 9 skill slots they can use. You don't need to worry about linking sockets or coloring sockets at all anymore but you can still upgrade the number of sockets for a skill. But instead of spamming jeweler orbs to get 5 extra sockets for your skill, you will use a single jeweler's orb per upgrade. You start out only having 2 free sockets for your skill, but as in PU1, this can be upgraded to 5 sockets. Specific skill gems no longer drop as loot, instead uncut skill gems will drop. The uncut skill gems can then be used to create any skill gem of your choosing, with the only restriction being that the level of the uncut skill gem need to match or be greater than the tier of the skill you wish to create. You no longer level skill gems by gaining experience, instead you use another uncut skill gem to level that skill to the level of the uncut skill gem. Skill gems in PoE 2 will in general have much more stricter weapon requirements than in PoE 1, where most skills can only be used by a single weapon type such as a mace. We do know that skill gem quality still exists, but we don't know what it does to any gem just yet. Brand skills will not be making a comeback in PU2 and neither will pure movement skills like flame dash. Spirit gems are skills that reserve spirit, a new resource in PU2. This includes persistent buffs, permanent minions and some meta gems. Examples are arctic armor and the Kazan event gems. Spirit gems are created the same way as regular skill gems, except they specifically require an uncut spirit gem instead. In PoE 2, support gems no longer have levels and we haven't seen anything about quality for them. Every support gem you use incrementally adds 5 to the corresponding attribute as a requirement globally. You can't use the same support gem in different skills, forcing you to choose where the support gem best fits. Meta gems are a new class of gems. When socketing a meta gem into your skill window, you can then use other skill gems in the support slots. We have technically seen this interaction in PU1. For example, all the cast on something gems are now categorized as meta gems. However, in PUE2, you don't have to socket a specific skill to be used to trigger another one. Instead, these meta gems will reserve spirit and can globally trigger the supported skills. To trigger the skills, you need to build up energy, which I will talk about later. A meta gem can sometimes be a skill itself. In PoE 2, just like in PoE 1, all martial weapons come with a basic attack that costs no mana. However, in PoE 2 you can add support gems to this attack. And this attack will also level up and get more sockets available as your character levels up. Scepters and caster weapons will not have a basic attack as you can't attack with them. Instead, they will grant you an implicit skill. This skill also doesn't cost any mana and you can add support gems to them. However, they will not scale with character level, instead you will have to find a higher item level base to get more sockets and a higher level skill. Some skills are also gained from ascendancies and similar to basic attacks, these will scale with character level. New for PoE 2 is that the skills from other sources than skill gems can still be scaled by affixes such as plus 2 levels of all skill gems. Spirit is a new resource used for reservation mechanics. These will be auras, persistent minions, persistent buffs, blasphemy plus curse combo, for totems if using ancestral bond, and some meta gems like all the cast when something happens. Your character starts off with zero spirit, but there will be quests along the campaign that gives you extra spirit permanently. The main items to increase spirit will be scepters, but there is at least one amulet that gives spirit as an implicit. How you allocate your spirit can be customized per weapon slot. GGG has stated that there may be ways to reserve mana and life, but I don't think we've seen any of it yet. 
Intelligence now gives 2 mana per point, and as stated earlier, is no longer used by default for reserve mechanics. Mana cost of skills is not spent all at once. If your attack is interrupted somehow, only a portion of the mana is spent. In PoE 2, Frenzy, Endurance and Power Charges do not give any passive buffs. Instead, they will be generated by some skills and then consumed by other skills to make them more powerful. Energy is a mechanic used for all cost on something mana gemmed, such as cost on shock. The idea is that you build up energy under a certain condition, when shocking in this case, before triggering any skill socketed with the meta gem. The energy required to trigger skills is scaled by its cast time. You will see a progress icon on the top left of your screen going from 0% to 100% before the spells are triggered. There's a few new weapons and offhands coming in PUE 2, and some old ones that have changed. A major change is that the only weapons you can attack with are categorized as martial weapons. Wands and staves are both non-martial weapons and are both thematically caster weapons. You can't dual wield wands in PUE 2, instead if you want to be an offensive spellcaster, you choose a staff instead. And you can't use wands together with martial weapons either. Daggers are the same as in PUE 1. We have been teased a unique dagger but I don't think we will otherwise see daggers initially on release of early access. Traps is a weapon type in PUE 2. We haven't seen too much about it yet and it will not be available initially on early access. Quarter staves are two-handed martial weapons, semantically aligned with the new monk class. Claws and bows are the same as in PUE 1, with the exception that claws are the only one-handed weapon that can't be used together with scepters. Claws will not be available initially on early access. Spears are a new martial weapon. They are one-handed but can't be dual-wielded. Thematically aligned with a new Huntress class. We will not see spears initially on early access either, but it is expected to be one of the first weapons to be introduced in a later update. Swords are the same as in PUE 1. However, they will not be available at release of early access. Crossbows are a new weapon type. Presumably categorized as a two-handed like bows. It is used as a rifle, sniper or shotgun, and can even shoot grenades. Axes will not be available at release of early axes. Flails are a new martial weapon. They are one-handed but can't be dual-wielded. They will not be available at release of early axes. Scepters are very different to how they are in PUE 1. They are non-martial and they count as both a main hand weapon and an off hand, so can be wielded together with most other weapons and at the same time used with most off hands. They can't be dual wielded and are associated with minions and auras. Focus is a new off hand in PvE 2. It's an energy shield base without any block chance. Quivers are the same as in PvE 1 and bucklers are dex-based shields which give you a passive block chance but no skills. Shields in PUE 2 are always strength-based and grants its wielder the new raised shield skill which gives 100% directional block chance. While the shield is raised, you still have a passive block chance from behind. Grenade launchers used to be an offhand for crossbows, but it seems like it has been removed recently and the grenade skills it used to give are now just gems. As stated before, scepters also counts as an offhand. Utility flasks have been removed from the game, and we are left having a single dedicated slot for both life and mana flasks. In PoE 2 we now have charms instead of utility flasks. They behave like reactive flasks and have charges associated with them. But they can't be manually used, instead they will be used under some condition. By default you can only use one charm but a modifier on a belt can give you two more. If you ever run out of charges in the campaign, you can always go back to the well in town to refill them. PUE 2 has made using weapon sets a core mechanic. Each skill can be assigned to one or several weapon sets, and when used your character will automatically switch between them. To allow for greater customization, the passive skill tree also allows different branches for each weapon set. This allows you to use wildly different skills effectively on each weapon set. Shapeshifting is a completely new mechanic in PvE 2. 
When you shapeshift, you will disable your weapon slots and hopefully there will be something that compensates for that. Shapeshifting counts as a third weapon set and has its own branch in the passive tree. GGG has stated that there will be three primary shapeshifting forms for the druid, where the PR form is the only one we've seen so far. However, the druid class will not be available at the start of early access, but will be the first class together with Huntress to be released later. The only shapeshift form available at release that we know of will be the demon form skill acquired from the Infernalist Ascendancy from the Witch. In PoE 2 there are now permanent minions that will resummon after a short delay when they die. These minions will reserve spirit and are not considered spells. At least some permanent minions have a command skill that you can actively use to make them use a special ability. Spectres are a special type of permanent minion, where you can store a basic enemy monster that you have killed like a pokeball. You can then summon as many of them as you want and the spirit cost will depend on the monster that you captured. In PoE 2 there are no longer any skills that create corpses. To make minions balance throughout the game they will have different damage and health in regular content compared to against bosses. There is now also a dedicated key you can use to order your minions around. Auras no longer buff yourself, only allies, which include other players and minions. If you want to have a buff on yourself you want to use a buff for a persistent buff instead. There are scepters that grant auras. One thing I couldn't figure out is if the 9 skill limit everyone have is including or excluding skills and basic attacks from other sources than skill gems. Could I for example stack many skills on items and use many supports with Jumbling Legionnaire? Let me know if you know. Otherwise, if you have any questions about the mechanics and the topics covered, let me know. I will be dropping a part 2 soon about offensive mechanics, defensive mechanics, ailments and more.